All right, guys, I just got done reading volume 104 of One Piece. So I am officially caught up with the Kindle version of the English translation. I know I'm like a year or so behind, probably a little bit more than that. But, you know, I wanted to go ahead and talk about certain things now that I'm officially, you know, not a, not a pleb, you know, now that I've officially gotten past my brick wall that was a Skypea, like, I can finally talk about One Piece as a whole and kind of talk about fan stuff and kind of participate in the community. And I've kind of already been doing that with my, uh, with my criticisms of the whole, like, is Yamato a boy or a girl thing? She's a girl. Like, I, I've been talking a little bit about stuff like that, but it's time to talk about, like, real plot stuff. You know, talk about real theories and not, like, fan wank nonsense that's, um, has no real bearing on, like, the world or the setting or, like, how One Piece is viewed by the general public. It's kind of shocking to me how, uh, how niche the idea that, like, Yamato could be trans actually is, considering how prevalent it was while Wano was still ongoing. But, like, you know, when I look at, like, the community as a whole, like, when I look at what's happening right now, um, what seems to be happening is that people seem to be adamant that the gum gum fruit being the sun god Nika mythological Zoan, you know, actually, you know, a, di a different kind of fruit that it was originally implied to be is some kind of retcon. Right, that that is the big thing I've been seeing for a long time. I've seen people say like, "Oh no, uh, they introduced the idea in Punk Hazard." No, no, it was foreshadowed in Skypea. But I say, Oda has been foreshadowing this from the very beginning, right? Because if you think about it, it makes no sense that Shanks would put like such a strong emphasis on protecting the this random low tier per Paramythia from the world government, right? Well, I don't think it's explicit in uh, the opening chapters, like, what Shanks is intending to do with the gum gum fruit, but you can clearly see that, like, he's upset that Luffy ate it, right? You can clearly see it has some kind of significance. And at the time, it comes off that, like, oh, yeah, devil fruits are kind of uncommon. This might be a really cool fruit. You know, it gives you superpowers. You know, Luffy makes it out to be, like, this cool thing. But, like, you know, as the story goes on and you see more and more of it, you see more of the world and, like, the setting and stuff like that, you see that the gum gum fruit makes no sense, right? You see that it initially starts off as useless, right? You see Luffy isn't really able to use the gum gum fruit for anything, right? Because he's a stupid kid. And then you start seeing other fruits. And that led to this misconception that, like, that maybe the gum gum fruit was a low-tier fruit. And that, like, Luffy's, like, skills as a fighter comes from, like, using it creatively and, like, improvising and stuff like that. You know, like, that was the misconception that, that a lot of people had, was that, like, it wasn't a very good fruit at all, but Luffy was just pushing it to its natural limits, like, out of sheer will and determination, right? When that obviously isn't the case with how this thing was set up, how it was introduced, how Shanks was handling the was handling the thing, and I think above all, like, how Luffy has been consistently shown to be able to do things that other Paramythias can't do, right? Like, you know, you have the, the transformations in, in Ennis Lobby, right, that seemingly come out of nowhere. You have, like, the foreshadowing in, in, in Punk Hazard. Like, to me, it, it was very clear that Oda had been building up to this for a very, very, very long time. And I take great offense at, like, the idea that this was, you know, a retcon or that, like, he he's just making stuff up as he goes along, right? Like, I've seen Grand Line reviews kind of, kind of talk about that. I do not believe that at all. Like, not about hockey, which we saw from the very first chapter, and not about this, not about Nika, like, it just doesn't make any sense with how it was presented in the manga, with, like, uh, with how it was built up over the years. Like, you're simply underestimating Oda's ability to build up this specific plot point over a thousand chapters. Like, people who uh, were surprised by Gear Fit, like, clearly weren't paying attention to what's been happening over the, the past couple of arcs. With, like, Luffy's out-of-nowhere transformations and just how his... Uh, his fruit ability makes no sense in the context of what he's supposed to be able to do, right? Like, this was a perfectly well-executed explanation. And 
a, a masterful mix, misdirection, I would say, because Oda never explicitly said it was a paramythia, right? Like, it was other characters who described it as a paramythia. And as we've seen in, like, a handful of other times, like, you can sometimes uh, mix up fruit types depending on, like, their properties or whatever. Like, uh, you know, uh, Katakuri's fruit, for example, it's like a, it's a special paramythia because it has, like, some elements of, like, a logia, right? Like, there are instances of that, of, like, people misinterpreting, misinterpreting how a power actually works, right? You know, uh, Enaru isn't able to, like, discern how to beat Luffy because, like, his powers counter his, right? He, being from Skypea, which does not have rubber as a substance, he's not familiar with its properties. And as a result, like, really struggles getting the upper hand in that fight, despite obviously being a way superior fighter. Like, when I, when I uh, think back on it, like, there were a lot of indications that Nika was a thing from a long time ago. Like, it, it, it's interesting how, how how Oda was able to, like, implement all of these puzzle pieces at, like, different arcs, right? You have the very beginning with, like, Shanks signifying, like, the gum gum fruit's importance. You have, like, stuff like, uh, you know, Marine Ford, where they introduce, like, mythological Zoans for the first time. Actually, no, I think, I think, yeah, mythological Zoans are first introduced in Impel Down. And then in Marine Ford, you get, like, the Buddha thing. So you get, like, you know, an implication of, like, that there are, like, wildly different Zoan types and what we're familiar with, right? You get stuff like Mark of the Phoenix, and you're, you're shown how radically different his powers are compared to other Zoans, right? You get, like, this perspective of what's going on and, like, uh, how high the power ceiling in One Piece actually is, right? Like, it's, in a lot of ways, it's a lot more nuanced than I think a lot of people give it credit for. I... I keep seeing people try to say that, like, One Piece isn't a particularly good battle series or that, like, I don't agree with that. I really feel as if One Piece is quite a bit, quite a cut above uh, the majority of its competition. You know, it's far superior to a uh, trite, like, Hunter x Hunter, for example, or Yu Yu Hakusho, or uh, JoJo's, for sure, with its creative ability to use... Like, I, 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 I try thinking of, like, what manga in the genre really encompasses, like, the creativity of One Piece while still maintaining a sense of consistency over such a long period of time, and I can't do it. Like, you saw what happened with Bleach. You saw what happened to Naruto and, like, My Hero Academia and, like, the, stereoty the stereotypical thing that happens to the vast majority of these characters, right? These stories is that, like, it eventually becomes this giant wank fest for the protagonist and everything else doesn't matter, right? Nothing else that goes on in the world of My Hero Academia matters other than, like, Deku's quest for the top, right? Meanwhile, you have, like, One Piece and you have, like, you know, massive character developments for characters like Momonosuke. You know, you have characters that, that come out of nowhere that become fan favorites like Yamato, right? You have, like, these really well-nuanced plot lines that go on for, like, thousand, like, uh, have gone on for, like, a thousand chapters. Like, I was just thinking before I went live that, like, wow, we haven't seen Blackbeard since, like, what, Dress Rosa? He hasn't <laughs> interacted with Luffy since then. Like, we still have no idea what his plans are. We have no idea what he's doing. Like, we have no idea what Shanks is intending to do with, like, when, when he's going after the One Piece and stuff like that. But when we do know, it, it is all going to make sense. And I do think that is something that a lot of people, like, complaining about retcons aren't really taking into consideration is that this is a story in progress, right? There are, like, legit retcons in stories, but, like, when you're continually working on a, on a project like this, like, you can't really expect... There have been so many times, you know, I've seen where, like, Oda has, like, incorporated some aspect into the story that's clearly canon, but has to be, like, explained through an SBS to, like, people who can't, like, uh, who don't, like, pick up on something. Like, it... it, it, it it's been, like, I've seen people, like, struggle with concepts as uh, as simple as, like, Nami's attachment to, like, the tangerine tree, right? Like, I feel like a lot of people don't have a high enough IQ to pick up the intricacies of One Piece and, like, really understand why it's such a great series, right? Like, I think, I think a lot of these uh, troglodytes who are more used to, like, the, the random retcons and, and nonsensical storytellings of 
of Western superhero comics, like, don't understand that, like, One Piece is a lot, a lot more cohesive. It makes a lot more sense. It's a lot more consistent, right? Like, it, comparing this to, like, Marvel and DC is laughable because One Piece hasn't had, like, any real problems with, like, characterization or plot developments or, or like, any real examples of retcons. You know, all these examples of retcons that people throw out there just don't make a whole lot of sense. Like, when you look at what people are doing with uh, this, this Nika thing, like, pretending that it's a retcon, like, they don't understand what a retcon actually is. Like, they don't understand that, that there's no, that they just assumed that, that the fruit was a paramythia, that they were misled, that like, that they weren't able to pick up on this like perfectly reasonable plot development, that this, you know, magical artifact has a, has a lot more going for it than uh, we initially understood. They can't handle this simple concept. And as a result, they spurred about Oda, how Oda is a hack and they're not gonna read a, another thousand chapters of this crap. Like it's just, it is disgusting. It really is. I've, um, I have a, I, I need to consume more uh, One Piece content and talk a little bit more about like some other things um, that I've noticed. Like, you know, like I've seen a lot of people attack like Thriller Bark, for example, one of the better arcs. You know, I, I've seen people like try and, and, and like make these crazy statements, but I'll be trying to address these things um, going forward. Uh, as of today, this is a proper One Piece channel.